<clears throat> okay, we're rolling. All right, this is an interview at the New York State Military Museum, Saratoga Springs, New York. It is the 16th of October, 2007, approximately 1245. Interviewers are Mike Russert and Wayne Clark. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth? Uh, William Howard Hull, uh, born March 3rd, 1921. Okay, where were you yep. born? Cohoes. Cohoes, okay. What was your educational background before you went into service? Uh, it, uh, yeah, I uh, finally quit in the uh, senior year of my education in Cohoes, the high school. Okay. Do, do you remember where you were when you heard about Pearl Harbor? <clears throat> Gee, that's a good question to ask. Uh, well, I know that was on a Sunday, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And uh, I probably might have been delivering papers myself uh, when I heard about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I delivered the uh, Times Union. And I had quite a few uh, customers and maybe about 21 to 30 uh, mm -hmm. customers that I uh, delivered papers to. Okay. Did you enlist or were you drafted? Drafted. All right. Got the uh, draft number. <laughs> oh, uh, what was it? <laughs> 32, 37, 36, 37. Still remember that. Oh, gee. Easy, because it was all in the 30s. 30s, yes. Yep. Um, did you, you ended up in the Army Air Corps? Yes. How did you end up there? How did I end up there? Yes, sir. Oh, well, the ending of it was, uh, I was in, uh, my records were all down in Stewart, uh, New York, at that uh, air base there. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, when I got discharged from the Air Force, I was down there at Randolph Field, and uh, the only thing is they had to be home within about two days, I think it was, and uh, then they had to, you know, go down to the uh, enlistment, not the enlistment, but the veterans, uh, where they inducted me, inducted, inducted me, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, I had my car and I had my wife with me uh, down there in San Antonio. So uh, in order to be home in the proper time, I enlisted in the Air Corps Reserve. Oh, okay. Uh, so I was discharged in uh, San Antonio at Randolph Field. But all my records went over into uh, New York at uh, Seward Base. And uh, so when the first war over there and the east there began, I thought I was going to be uh, uh, called up, but I never was called up. And I was a sergeant all the way through. Well, uh, and actually, I was private person and private mm -hmm. first class, corporal, then sergeant. Now you went in in July of '42. Where did you go for your basic training? Uh, basic training, well, I see. Down in Bainbridge, Georgia, but uh, I, I was inducted in, uh, off of an Albany, but went down into uh, Long Island. Now, what was the name of the place down there in Long Island? Right yeah. now? Camp Upton. Camp Upton, Upton. yes. Uh, but uh, I didn't get too much training there at all. Yeah. But uh, all my training really uh, came in down there in Bainbridge, Georgia. Uh, what uh, kind of training did you get down there? Uh, radio operator and mechanic, and uh, but from there I went to Scott Field, and uh, that's where I got to schooling. And uh, now, where's Scott Field? Scott Field is in Illinois, over there near St. Louis. Okay. But, uh, see, all right, but go back to uh, why I uh, probably uh, chose to go there. Uh, when I went to work uh, in General Electric in Schenectady, and uh, they assigned me uh, to the end of the manufacturing of the uh, shortwave radios. 
and uh, I had to take and uh, test out uh, the everyone that come off from the uh, line, and if I found anything wrong with the uh, tele or the the shortwave radio, I would take and send it back into the factory, and uh, it would depend on naturally what I wrote up on it, where it would actually go. But then it would eventually come back uh, to uh, myself, and I uh, got the final approval of the uh, transmitters. And the transmitters are the ones that were used in the bombers, like the B-19 or B-17 and B-24. Mm -hmm. So you had worked well, at. Or that background of the. Okay, so you had worked at GE with radios prior to the war, and they. Yes. Put you into that area, okay. Now, was at Scott Field, was that a radio school or? Yes, radio school. Okay, how long did you do? How much schooling did you have? Oh, uh, just you know, the general idea. Yes, uh, I'd say about three months of training. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now they were on uh, the the radios that were on the planes. Is that what you worked on? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The bombers. Yeah. Uh, in particular. Okay. So you did repairs and so on in those. Uh, yes. Uh, but basically, uh, more or less, you, you take them out of the uh, thing and you look at it and you know sell them the things, and then you'd have to go back to uh, uh, the uh, <clears throat> place where the they would do all the repairs, but uh, I would uh, recommend what they had to be do, done to the mm -hmm. uh, equipment. Okay. Where did you go after Scott Field? Oh, Scott Field. Well, here again, uh, if I had that application mm -hmm. here, I could tell you precisely where. But, all right, where did I go? Hmm. That's what I should have brought my book to you. Well, you stayed in the States during the war. Yes, yes. Okay. But uh, I do a lot of flying over water. In other words, uh, went out. And uh, the gunnery school, I was on the uh, plane that would uh, tow the target. Oh, okay. And uh, that would be like the, the B-26, the B-20, uh, anyway. The two engine uh, bomber. B 25. B 25, yes. The Mitchell. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you towed targets? And the towed target, and then the uh, planes behind you, and when the target out quite away, mm -hmm. they would take and uh, have them come and shoot at the targets. Mm -hmm. And of course, the target was well, about a half mile behind you. So in other words, they had to approach it either from the left or the right, but never from the right. Mm -hmm. Right. So you did that, and um, you repaired radios in the bombers also. Yes, right. That would be in the uh, 17 and the 24. Yeah, they had a regular room, and that's what I usually flew in. Mm -hmm. They only got sick once uh, up there, and that was because one of the gunners got sick himself, and the radio room was more in the center of the plane, and you know, it doesn't go up and down as much. Mm -hmm. and of course, he got ill, and he started throwing up, and I didn't mind that. I got the aroma. I don't know what I'm him. <laughs> <laughs> but I, that's the only time I got sick, and I did a lot of flying mm -hmm. in the, as a radio operator. Now, did you fly up through the coast of the United States? at the uh, yes, uh, I was stationed actually down in Panama City, Florida, and from there I went over to Apalachicola, Florida, and uh, that's where I really had even more so. That was an affiliate of uh, Tyndall Field. What did you do on your days off? Oh, uh, <coughs> let's see, the days off. Well, I would say uh, uh, down there at the uh, armory and uh, a place where that we, uh, I, I, was, I was stationed like at headquarters. Uh -huh. And so there was uh, an area there which, you know, you'd go sit down and read mm -hmm. or you talk with the fellows and stuff like that. And uh, also I wound up that I had my own car down there. and. Uh, 
and I had permission to bring it right on the field because I was living off the field with my wife. Yeah, so you were married before you went into service? Uh, oh, I, I had to be in service because I got married down in uh, Bainbridge, Georgia. Oh, okay. That wasn't no, that, that, oh, this sorry. is my first oh. wife. This okay. is my second wife. Okay. We've been married. Well, uh, I tell you about my husband's <laughs> service. My first husband. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you see any USO shows at all? Any, any what? Any USO shows or anything like that come to your base? I don't believe so. Okay. USO though. He's a little hard of hearing. Yeah. You didn't see any USO shows at all? Oh yeah, I'd say they'd have them come in and uh, we would uh, naturally attend it and mm -hmm. uh, be at a regular theater on the post. Mm -hmm. And that's where you would see those type of uh, operations showing you, you know, and done for amusement also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you see any big name stars at that time? Not to my knowledge, I don't recall. Mm -hmm. I don't want to forget you're going back quite a yes, few years. Right. <laughs> yep. Now, um, so you lived off base then? Yes, yes. But uh, it had to be uh, in there by uh, all uh, by eight o'clock, and uh, sometimes I had to arrive at seven thirty or so. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd leave my car there in the parking lot where it's supposed to be. And uh, <laughs> one other thing, one time I come in after my flight, and uh, geez, my doors were open, my trunk was open. And what they did, they would search my car for tools, and also what they must have done was taken the samples of my gasoline in the tank, because uh, uh, they were suspecting that I might have been taking some gas from the airplanes and putting it in. Uh -huh. uh, fortunately, I didn't do that at all, uh -huh. and so therefore I, uh, I had a clean record that way. Uh -huh. uh, they, they did find, uh, I remember a. Uh, screwdriver. It was theirs. And they asked me about it. And I said, yes, I did. I said, I uh, borrowed that from the, uh, the, you know, the parts place there. Mm -hmm. And I said, I asked my uh, lieutenant if I could do it at first. Because what they were going to try to do would be pinning something on me because mm -hmm. I had that uh, in my car. And I said, yes, and I, uh, it's been in my car for about a day. And uh, so that was about the only incident I had while I had my car on base. And I had it, well, uh, that was Georgia. And I uh, brought it down to Texas at uh, Randolph. And uh, that was one of the reasons why I joined the Air Corps Reserve, so I could take my time going home. And. Uh, so my wife and I, we toured the southern part of uh, the United States on our, our way home. Mm -hmm. And I think it, was, it took about three weeks to get home. So that's one of the reasons why I joined the uh, reserve. Now, um, with you living off base and driving your own car, did you get extra gasoline? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, I had to do that with the city, though. And uh, then I had to buy my gas uh, right there uh, at the pumps down there. This is where I bought the gasoline. This is where the tankers came in and unloaded to their big tankers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was able to buy that gas there a little bit cheaper. So I, I didn't have no records, bad records at all with my car or myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, now, did you eat on base? Oh yes, yes, yeah. I had eat on base. Mm -hmm. yes. Was your wife able to eat on the base also? Uh, no, I mean, uh, it'd be only the one meal that I had to eat on base. Mm -hmm. and breakfast I'd have at home, and mm -hmm. dinner, and then uh, in the evening I'd have my dinner with my wife. Did you get anything, any extra food rationing uh, because you were? A member of the armed forces? Uh, I let my wife take care of all that. <laughs> okay. Because uh, she could do that, she could go down into the city there and uh, talk to those in, which she did. Okay. Did she have a job too? Uh, yeah, uh, so watching her child, the one child that oh. we had. <laughs> okay. Um, 
Well, that was the reason why uh, she didn't. Wait a minute. Well, yeah, she did. She works in an. Uh, oh, I'm trying to think what they call it. I worry they you could civilian school could go in there and Red, buy. The Red Cross. No. Oh, the commissary. Yeah. 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 Okay. So she only worked there a short time because I got transferred, so she came with me. Mm -hmm. And of course, they were aware that uh, she was with me. Now, did you, um, so you traveled around quite a bit during the war? Uh, yes. You, uh, did you stay mostly in the southern, southeast, or? Uh, yes, down in the southeast, uh, more or less, uh, Florida. And then uh, I was up there in North Carolina, and uh, well, uh, and then I went to school over there in uh, St. Louis. Uh, that's the, the big city, but Randolph Field. Mm -hmm. No, that's that was in Texas. Texas. The school in, in uh, there was the radio. I'm trying to think now. You said you were at Scott Scott Field. Field. Yes, yes, uh, Scott Field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Now, did, did the radios for the bombers improve at all during the war? Uh, well, of course, they were gonna, the bombers that they had in there, I worked on them in the GE. Mm -hmm. So I was familiar with that uh, type of uh, bombers that are that, they, that is tell, yeah, well, I say television. <laughs> the, uh, shortwave equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, I was aware of what it was and I could work it on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did they improve at all during the war? Uh, if they did, I mean, I wasn't able to tell uh, okay. right offhand. I can't mm -hmm. recall. Uh, they were all in good working condition. Very seldom they have to take them out of the uh, airplane. Okay. Now, um, you flew coastal patrols also? Uh, I would say yes, up to a certain point, but uh, the majority of the time it was, yeah, you know, flying out over the ocean. Well, were they like submarine patrols or well, anything like, that you know? Just a, I would say that uh, just if they had any uh, chips, or uh, looking at them and things like that, mm -hmm. and of course airplanes, and actually mm -hmm. uh, identify them. So I got a half base pay for flying. So uh, as a sergeant, I made a fairly good amount of money at that time. Mm -hmm. And then I got half of that for flight time. So now when you went on a plane uh, for flight time, what was your job on the plane? As a radio operator? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And you flew mostly B-25s? No. Uh, oh. Yeah, B-25, B-26s. B-17s I liked very much, and B-24s. Mm -hmm. Why'd you like the 17? Uh, it seemed more stable, and uh, I felt more secure in that. Uh, or the uh, B-24, I don't know, I just didn't like that in the airplane as well. Mm -hmm. Although I guess that was supposed to be even more modern at that time. Yeah, well, the, yeah. But I liked the flying on the B-17 the best of all. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's the way they had things arranged for me. Mm -hmm. and okay. Um, now you were in until 48. What did you do after the end of the war? Uh, well, after I got discharged down there at Randolph, I went in business with my uh, father and, and brothers in selling autos, uh, mm -hmm. Plymouth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I was going to ask you something. I don't know what it was. Now, from 1945 to 1948, you must have seen some some big changes. Oh, uh, when I was in the reserve, uh, they never did call me up or anything. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, that was, uh, years I was selling cars, and I wasn't working for the General Electric at all. Mm -hmm. Now, after you left service, did you use the GI Bill at all? I don't think so. Uh, what manner would I be to using? Buy a house. For education or buy a house? 
Well, yeah, probably when I bought the first house, I mean, there is that possibility because I remember I got it at a lower rate mm -hmm. of interest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 4%. Yeah. 4%. Yeah, yes. Did you ever use the 5220 club? No. You went right back to work then? Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Um, did you ever join any veterans organizations? Uh, no. Uh, <clears throat> in Cohoes, they uh, didn't have any. Uh, they had to go to either Albany or Skyfield mm -hmm. uh, if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Did you ever uh, stay in contact with anyone that was in service with you? Did I ever want? Stay in contact with anyone that you were in service with. Uh, not too long after I moved around. Uh, they had been working in headquarters there, uh, and uh, so therefore I wasn't in the, uh, the unit where they uh, stationed uh, all the uh, enlisted personnel. So they didn't make many close friends then? No. Because I, you moved so much. That's right. I did. I uh, moved around quite a bit, and I think on the air. If I could count them, right, about eight places, I imagine, is all what I've been to. Mm -hmm. And I say, there's always, I uh, finally wound up in the headquarters section. Okay. How do you think your time in the service had an effect on your life? Well, it got me around the United States quite a bit. And uh, I uh, didn't have no bitterness at all. Uh, to my knowledge, I don't. I didn't get any, any fights or anything like that at all. Mm -hmm. uh, now, did you meet your wife while you were in service? No, let's see. Wow, we're going back now. Anyway, uh, no, I uh, met her before. I, uh, okay. I, uh, all right. Um, Have you, have you stayed in touch with anybody that you were in the service with? No, not really, no. Of course, I had my brother who was in the service, and he was a master sergeant. Uh huh. And uh, he was in quite a while himself. Mm -hmm. Now, did he go overseas? Yes, he is over on the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you remember where you were, or do you remember about the death of President Roosevelt? Oh, yes, I, I remember it, yeah. Where was I at the time? Uh, that's another good question. Yeah. Uh, How did you feel about that when you heard well, about it? I uh, felt at a loss because when the others come in, I, mean, uh, I didn't know them at all. Mm -hmm. But uh, because of, uh, he was from, from New York, I thought, well, gee, that's it. And I uh, go to New York City once in a while, I go by where he lived in that city. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's that's how I felt, you know, that closest uh, to him because mm -hmm. I knew where he lived. Mm -hmm. uh, but when the other fellow came in, I can't remember who. Truman. Who? Harry Truman. Oh yeah, Harry Truman. Yeah, yeah, he was a stranger to me, <laughs> <clears throat> okay. but I respected him though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you remember hearing about the atomic bombs being dropped? Oh uh, yes. Uh, yeah, but, Do you remember your reaction to that? Uh, glad that I was where I was, mm -hmm. and that uh, a lot of people were simply killed, and uh, I saw some of those who were injured. And um, yeah, that was a sad story. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, to read about them. Uh, however, they were our enemy then, and I didn't feel too bad. But if I need to come down and think about it as an individual, then I did feel bad. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you for your interview. Yes, all right. Thank you.